Hey there. Welcome back to The Surge 2. We have finally reached Gideon's Rock. And I already hear sights and sounds that, uh... I'm not too excited to confront in person, let's say. But at least the target's in plain sight. And not just for us, either. Attention all units! The creature's gone berserk! We need help down here! I repeat, we need help! Alright, well, the good news is, I suppose hunting our target won't be that hard. Just gotta follow the gunshots. The bad news is... The guns are also gonna be pointed at us. Surprise, surprise, Jordan Black was right. The hunters are not going to be friendly. But I think these guys are more of, like, in the spirit of competition than being, like, insane zombie drone people. So... Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. I don't know who you are, but I think we can help each other. Meet us in the camp of the cliff. We're not with the other hunters. Okay. I suppose I will be sure to do that once I am done thinning the herd a little bit, so to speak. Anyway, this is a little different than things usually are for us in the Surge. We are no longer fighting zombie drones who have been taken over by, I guess, advanced robotics. Or scavengers struggling to survive. No, these guys are like an organized force with cloaking devices and katanas and cool cloaks, but not of the device variety and guns. And they're presumably getting paid for what they do. And what they do is murder stuff real good. But again, there is an upside. The upside, of course, is that the hunter's equipment is quite powerful, especially the sword. And I mean, it's a katana. It's a cool katana. It's a cyber future katana. How can you not like it? We'll talk about the rest of their crap later. The, the katana is cool. <laughs> Up ahead, you're almost there. Okie doke. I certainly hope this isn't some kind of trap. Hello. Fancy meeting you here, Head Wound. You've left a trail of destruction down there. Guess you enjoy making enemies. Now hang on, they struck first, I'll have you know. That happens to me a lot. My guys? Bullshit! Those jackasses betrayed us! It's every man for himself down there. Cutting each other up like a bunch of spoiled pansies. We're the last hunters sane enough to catch that monster. Got the tech and the expertise. We just need some extra muscle. If you're willing to share the reward, we'll share the risk and guide you from our base. Perfect time to join this whole shit show, eh? Well, I think I can manage that. I mean, it's what I came here to do anyway, sorta. All the glory and half the tech strap. We can cash in on a massive bounty if we deliver the creature's brain to some mystery man at CIT. But remember, you try and get one over on us, we'll finish you. Oh, I don't doubt it. You hunter folks, as we've just spoken about, are quite well equipped. So I think I'll take you up on that offer. I managed to find that freak's Achilles heel some time ago. Cost us a lot of good men. We can blast magnetic waves through the park if you activate the three old repeller towers scattered around Gideon's Rock. Ask my guys if you need more intel. Oh. Okay, well, I guess it couldn't be that easy, huh? Tell me about the Gribbly. Why does he wear the mask? Not much. That bastard doesn't tend to leave witnesses. But that foul nanite sludge seems to magnify its powers. Avoid that crap at all costs. Oh, you don't have to worry about that. I am quite experienced with avoiding pools of Gribbly nanite sludge. I got a whole game's worth of it. Name's Hawk. I'm in charge of these halfwits. The guy at the door is Kill Switch. He's my comms officer. Brilliant man, but a bit of a dick. Oh, and there's a weirdo named Roach skulking around. Talk to him at your own risk. I'd assume that the risk is not worth the reward in such a case. Good luck out there. Thanks, buddy. 
Yeah, that looks like it could kill a big grubbly beastie pretty good. Or at least open the trap to make it fall into a hole in the ground. You know, kind of like when you when you lead a cartoon character to a cardboard box propped up with a stick. Or something like that. I'm gonna assume that that's the general gist of the plan here. Hey, what's up? Hawk trusts you, then we're good. For now. Alright then. I'm surprised that I guess we actually are cooperating here. Nice to meet you, Kill Switch. I could tell you, but then I'd have to... Well, you know how that line ends, don't you? You'd have to switch me. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. Tell me about your crew. Why are they so split up? The monster happened. The hunters have always been a rowdy bunch, but lately things have reached a boiling point. Hey, at least the three of us have a code of honor. And I'll take it to the grave if I have to. Of course, I'd rather not. Yeah, you'd rather do the killing. We 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 just talked about that, Mr. Killswitch. Goodbye. See you around. I will be back when I have taken care of some of these towers. I'm guessing you're Roach. Howdy. I'm Roach. It's nice to meet you, Mr. Man Bun. Hmm. Yeah. Palamon went AWOL. Looking for audio recordings. Okay. Quick and to the point. I like it. I'll help out with that. Alright. Uh, yeah, Alright! Uh, where am I looking for these things? Go check the areas around all three repeller units. That's your best bet. So they're just generally going to be spread around this area and it will be a long, involved quest. Yeah, I figured. <sighs> Ugly nano mutant. It has to die. I would be glad to kill it for you. Preferably with you, but I'll do it alone too. We're kill crazy. Don't know who started it, but Jordan's mad as hell. Even blame me, Hawk and Kill Switch for it. Your weapons have to do the talking. Don't I know it. I like this guy. I like this roach guy. The cut of his jib. <laughs> yeah, good one. See? Even he knows I'm in a video game and have to do everything myself. Later. See you around, pal. All right, then. I suppose we are going to be exploring for audio logs while we're here. I was going to do that anyway. I'm, I'm kind of the completionist type, but I guess I also would be happy to do it for a reward from an NPC. I mean, we've already got Mr. Scrappy, our vending machine friend, so I, I don't think I really needed extra motivation. But if it'll get us more quick and to the point dialogue from this roach guy, I'm all for it. And now we are confronted with a problem. <laughs> for most of the Let's Play now, I have been wearing partly, excuse me, partly the Vulture set and partly the Scavenger set. But that's not really going to cut it anymore. <laughs> We're getting to the point where the Surge 2 is going to start ramping up its difficulty. And in addition to crafting this cool looking cowboy hat, we're gonna need to make something that's perhaps a little bit more defensive. <laughs> something that will actually protect me from taking damage from enemies in this video game. I've talked about this before, especially in the let's play of the first game, but the surge is not really the type of video game where you can tank hits. You can't really you can't really do that in the surge because it's more focused around constantly being, you know, playing footsies with the enemies to, to dance around their hits and all that kind of stuff. And in the surge too, you have the directional parry and blocking system, so you have essentially two different methods of negating enemy damage. So the tanking playstyle is a lot harder to make effective, I suppose. Because really, if you kit yourself out with heavy armor, all you're doing is making it so that you can't move as much, essentially. All, all you're really doing is reducing your own stamina regen for not a super high increase in defense. However, the Surge 2 has somewhat rectified this. I'm not going to say entirely, but the new system for... Assigning points after you level up to health, stamina, or battery allows you to create like your own little custom hybrid build, basically, where you can wear heavy armor and also put all your points into, for example, stamina and health 
to essentially make kind of a tank build, like the tankiest you can reasonably get. And to wit, to, to that end, we are recreating the Surge 1 Let's Play in more than one way. I made the Scarab set again. Unfortunately, this means that I can't wear the implants I was going to wear. It's a little bit too heavy for us right now, so I have to take it off, which I will do in just a minute. We're picking up some fun implants, some ones that do some pretty fun stuff, like converting some of our damage to elemental damage or increasing our damage versus specific types of enemies uh, or stuff that makes it so we don't lose a, a battery bar. We always have one battery completely filled no matter what. And that kind of stuff is so cool. I, I love that they let you customize yourself to that extent, basically, where you can be like, I want to be focused entirely on battery. Battery, battery, battery. Always cut off limbs. A, B, C. Always be chopping. But we will be doing that in the next episode. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no need to make a fuss. What do you want? I want information. Whiz kid. Yeah, and I need a day off. What can I help you with? Oh boy, Hawk was right. You are a bit of a dick. Uh, little bit of everything, if you please. Let's see. Right now, it seems to be hanging out at Mustang Hills. That'll be the ride of a lifetime. Go for it. I'll support you. From the sidelines. Yeah, I get it. You guys are huge cowards. It's fine. I'll just do it myself. I'm used to it at this point. Goodbye. See you around. All right, then. Let's get this show on the road. If you are, for some reason, just joining us at episode 8 of the Surge 2 Let's Play, according to Gideon's Rock, the adventure starts here. You haven't missed a damn thing, apparently. The adventure is only just... beginning. Uh-oh. Well, that's unfortunate. Apparently, these park security robots don't like people hanging out here after hours. Joke's on them, though. I watched the Surge 2 E3 preview footage, so I already know how to fight them. Yes, indeed. These Gaia robots, as they are called, park security, although they don't really do such a good job as guards so much as, I don't know, deforestation machines. These were the first enemies that were shown off. Uh, I think the character in the preview footage was fighting him with a double duty weapon to show off some new mechanics and stuff. See that trap over there? Get this sucker up and running to fry that mutant. Yes, thank you. I remember watching that footage live, and I was I was super excited because I mean if you couldn't tell, I'm a big fan of the surge. And so seeing that they actually really were making a sequel to it made me very happy. Well, okay then. I suppose this is where the climactic final showdown will take place. Any status updates, Kane? You lost your mind? This thing is ripping us to shreds. Tough luck, hombre. No paycheck without some bloodshed. I like that attitude. I need someone from Wales to confirm or deny if people from Wales actually say hombre. I need to... I need to get Jamie the D back on so that I can ask him if people from Wales actually say hombre. I just don't know that much about Welsh culture, I guess. I really like Gideon's Rock. This area is cool. It's got some cool gimmicks and it looks very, very pretty. The whole thing's got, like, a strange, like, cerulean color overlay to it. I mean, in fact, here, let me just uh, color correct the footage for a second so that it sticks out in your head for the rest of this. But I like the color overlay. It adds, like, an artificial kind of feeling to it. Because 
I mean, it's not like this is a nature preserve specifically. It's in the middle of a major city. So you got to wonder just how much of this is actually natural. Who knows? Maybe we'll find out along the way. But I love it. I love the, the waving grass and the waving tree branches and all that stuff. I, I guess that kind of attention to detail has become a lot more commonplace in the current console generation and stuff, but I, I think it's cool that they, they bothered, you know, because the Surge 1 didn't have any areas like that, really. It, it had a little bit of foliage in, like, the boardroom, the Creo facility boardroom, but not anything like this. It's cool that they cared enough. Southern Repeller is close by. Let's wrap this up quickly, okay? Sounds good to me. You may have noticed that we did not go in the direction that Mr. Wizkid told us the monster was in. We have to visit all three repellers in order to draw out the monster and finish this area. But you can do it in any order. And I think that's pretty cool. That's that's really neat. Uh, again, one of the gimmicks of this area, although it's not, I guess, specifically a gimmick. It's just the way the area is designed. The way the area is designed is that we can visit any of the three repellers at any time, and there's different stuff down each path, to the point where there are some perhaps not so subtle things that change from playthrough to playthrough. Boy, I really, really belched out that word. From playthrough to playthrough, there are some things about Gideon's Rock that actually change that makes every playthrough of the Surge 2 unique in some small ways. And I think that is really, really cool. And we'll see that in action in the next episode. But some of you who have played the Surge 2 uh, and got a different set of areas than I did may be questioning why mine looks so different already. It's just fun. Creo's innovative photosynthesis technology creates real air from artificial plants. Breathe in a sigh of relief as you take in these incredibly realistic odors. Ah, smells like heaven, doesn't it? Please refer to the small print for risks and side effects. Man, I like that as is standard for Creo, all of the shit that they make is immediately busted and non-functional. It's just a placebo effect. That's what Creo is. Creo is like placebo effect the company. Only, unlike the placebo effect, there are negative effects to go with it. And hey, speaking of Creo, that reminds me. Now that we are working for the, the underground, we gotta start leaving these signs everywhere. The, the Project Resolve symbol. It's nice to hear that Dr. Chavez is still running around somewhere. She doesn't actually appear in this game in person. But it's good to know that she made it out of the Creo facility somehow. Maybe she caught the last train out. Oh boy, a nanite shatterer implant. That sure bodes well for the types of enemies, excuse me, the types of enemies we may be likely to encounter here. For the time being though, I really like these hunter guys. They are cool. It is rare in the Surge that you fight an actual organized team of enemies. In the Sur in the Surge 1, you kind of sort of got that with the Black Cerberus and the Creo security guys, but that was only for a short period and they didn't really act that different from normal enemies. But these hunters, they have a whole unique moveset, really. There aren't really any enemies that have this katana backhanded swing moveset. And, and their cloaking device lets them turn invisible, but you can break the body to stun them out of it. It's, it's so cool. The, they're such a cool twist on the normal ass human enemy. <laughs> I like them a lot. But they do come apart just the same as anyone else if you cut off their limbs, of course. What's that? My trap. Your trap? That's what I said. But like, why isn't it our trap, man? Our trap? I put my blood, sweat, and tears into this piece of junk. 
I build it all by myself. Paid for the parts out of my own pocket. I even tighten those little gears. Gears? Bullshit! I can't see any gears, bud! Are you dumb and blind now? Look there! Oh, down there, damn it! The little trigger, right? Oh, shit! <laughs> he really did put his blood, sweat, and tears into it. I have no idea what that shit's all about. I have no idea what that's all about. I do like that... I do like that you find the two guys right next to the audio log where they were talking to each other, though. It's nice that the audio log wasn't, like, a million miles away in a completely unrelated area, as is the case for video games. I suppose that's just another example of how the hunters are liable to turn on each other in the name of profit. It's almost like giving exosuits to just random people and expecting them to work together when you leave them alone to their own devices is a bad idea. It's, it's almost like just giving people exosuits and the ability to turn invisible isn't such a good way to get them to work together. They're far from an organized team, let's say. So there's a lot of shortcuts here in the forest. This area is actually quite dense with shortcuts, specifically because of the thing I mentioned about the area being different per playthrough. It's not a different layout or anything like that. Uh, it's to do with loot and enemy positions, and it has a lot to do with what Killswitch mentioned to us about the positioning of the beast. That actually does affect some things. It's not flavor dialogue. And that's why, that's why I really admire the effort that went into this game as a, a fully fledged sequel to The Surge. Again, I, I said this before a couple of episodes ago, I don't remember when, but this game does not feel to me like The Surge 1.5. It, it feels like a fully fledged sequel that expands on mechanics that needed expanding, for example, enemy variety, with stuff like the hunters and these big Gaia robots, uh, and transformative area design, in the case of places like Gideon's Rock here. This is a good game. <laughs> I don't know if you I don't know if you understand this by this point, but if you don't understand this by this point, maybe let me drive it home a little bit more. Because as we know, repetition does help hammer home a point. The Surge 2 is a really good game, you guys. I really think you should play it. <laughs> it just looks so pretty. I, I hope you're watching this at 4K now that I'm rendering these out at 4K. Because they are just... The, the foliage and stuff just looks so crisp. The Surge has this weird sharpening filter on it. Both games do. That makes things look especially like crisp and sharp compared to, I don't know, other games that have really aggressive anti-aliasing. This game's anti-aliasing, unfortunately, is broken. Uh, the Surge 1 also had this problem where there's FXAA, which is standard anti-aliasing, and then SMAA, which is a more advanced rendering method. And you don't really need to know the specifics of those to understand it. Just know that FXAA is more primitive, and thus it has a more jagged effect, essentially. SMAA is just generally smoother and better. However, the Surge 2's SMAA unfortunately adds this really ugly-ass smearing to the camera, and a lot of games do that, and I don't know why. Unfortunately, there is no way to fix it. Uh, I'm playing with SMAA on just to offset that sharpening thing I just mentioned a little bit, but when my character is standing still, you might notice that they're kind of like blurring in a very strange dreamlike way. It's not supposed to be that way. It's not supposed to look like that. They just haven't ever fixed it. Still looks quite good though, in my opinion. I'm not leaving any witnesses. Die. Uh. Okay. 
Well, hey, look, it's an impromptu boss fight. Cool. I suppose this gentleman is the one we are going to be collecting audio logs about for the rest of this area. I think it's kind of neat that Captain Cervantes here is always in the same place. He, he's always in he's always in this section of the park. So if you know he's here and you don't want to fight him, or you want to take him on first on a replay game, you can just come here and do that. Again, this fight is really cool. I like this fight a lot. He's, he's an elite hunter, and so of course he has more advanced tech than the normal enemies, but at his, at his core he's still just a guy. However, he has a cool shotgun, and I want that cool shotgun. We all know how much I like shotguns in video games. And so I am morally obligated to cut off his legs so we get that shotgun from him. You also can cut up... It, you know what? In fact, you can cut off any part of this guy and get a unique piece of equipment that we can't get anywhere else right now. If we cut off his arm, we'll get the sword. If we cut off his body, we'll get his body armor. If we cut off the leg I'm targeting, we'll get the shotgun. However... I feel like I'm saying however a lot in this episode. I'll say it again. However, the sword and the armor we can get elsewhere. The shotgun we cannot. This is our only opportunity to get it as far as I am aware. I don't think you can buy it from a vendor later on. There's a vendor later on that sells drone upgrades that you've missed along the way, but I don't think he actually sells this one. It's Rex at the Seaside Court. He'll sell the drone upgrades. But not this one. And so... I'll just be taking that. Because I don't think he needs it anymore anyway. Clever girl. But yes, he also drops the Wraith gear. Which is the upgraded Jag set. Hey there, Jordan. <laughs> I bet you're wondering what's been going on. Seems like I can scheme even better than you. Getting my hunter comrades to turn on each other was easy. Almost too easy. All I had to do was to fan the flames. First with Jack, then with Faye. After that, I only needed a pawn. Strangled one of the rookies in his tent. The next morning, the fireworks started. They were so eager to blame each other, I only had to sit back and wait for one of them to crack. Didn't take very long. Both groups already had it in for each other. If my name happened to come up, I'd spread some rumors to muddy the waters. Took a bit of a gamble on that one, but boy did it pay off. They tried to calm everyone down, but that was never gonna work. Even I didn't expect that kind of... savagery. It was a bloodbath. Plain and simple. I'll be the last man standing, Jordan. The reward will be all mine. Yeah, let's hope he brought some coins to the river sticks with him. He's gonna need him to cross. One down. Two to go. That wasn't so hard. Amazing. We didn't insulate any wires and it still works. Glad you survived. Thanks, pal. It would have been nice if you had told me there was exposed wires and other miscellaneous danger along the way. In fact, Kill Switch didn't really give us any helpful information at all, did he? We'll have to have a talk with him about that when we get back. So yes, it seems this Captain Cervantes is responsible for the hunters all turning on each other. These logs are specifically for Roach. Unfortunately, we cannot mention them to Jordan Black should we encounter her again, which I feel like is a little silly. Or at least, I don't remember being able to mention them to her. I think if we go back to the bar, she will no longer be there. Or maybe she will and we can tell her about how we've killed like 30 or so of her compatriots. Then again, she did say that they were liable to attack us because everyone's vying for the prize. 
I guess this is what we get for getting in their way. But to be fair to our character, we didn't really have a choice now, did we? This is just kind of where the plot has led us. We've made our bed, and now we have to lie in it. And it's covered in bones, and blood, and chopped off limbs. But such is the Surge, you know? This is just kind of how things have played out since Warren's adventure in the first Surge. It's a, a cruel world that these people live in, where flesh and blood are pretty much all human beings are comprised of. Apparently nobody in the Surge has any muscles, or bones, or anything to keep people from being torn apart like tissue paper by even mildly effective blows to the... Joints? I guess you attack the joints. Just kind of swing wildly when I hit people with my weapon, but it's effective either way. People really shouldn't come apart as easily as they do in this game. Maybe the surge takes place in like a horror movie style universe. Anyway, I digress. We're going to be wearing the vulture set just a little longer to build up my stock of tech scrap, but we'll change into the scarab set soon enough for old time's sake. For now, that's going to do it for the Surge 2. I will see you next time when we are once again joined by some lovely German folks and proceed further into Gideon's Rock. <laughs>